Hello and welcome to my channel. The topic for today's video is using IBM Transformation Extender 10 to transform an XML file to a PDF. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you. Okay, so here we have our IBM Transformation Extender 10 Design Studio open. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a project. So we go to New and choose Extender Project. We're going to call this project XML to PDF. Okay, the project starts as pretty much empty and if I open the directory you will note here that it is entirely empty. I've got a command prompt open in the same place and into this I'm going to bring in the template that I created earlier. Okay, we have our template. I'll just quickly show it to you. It's your standard um, energy statement from your energy provider and it's got fields for account name, a name and address, a date and various balance amounts. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, website that I used to create this form is a website called JotForm, which I will show you now. It's a fairly basic website to create uh, forms with acro fields. It's a case of just drag and drop and set the properties. And if I go into my JotForm account and click Edit Form as PDF, you will see the form that I, I, I created earlier, including importing a, a a random graphic there. Okay so that's how I created the form and this is the form that was created which I called template.pdf. Right I'm also going to copy in another couple of files here. Copy in, uh, no, 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 t input x. Okay so what I'm bringing in there is an XML file and its associated schema. So this is my input data that's in XML format. We'll have a quick look at that. Here it is in source view and you can see that it is uh, a root object is called root. There's a row object. This is a repeating object but in my data I've only got the one row. And then there's a bunch of details that I want to eventually end up on my PDF document. Quick look at the schema. Um, it's nothing special but if we have a quick look at the design view and double click on root as I said before, the rows are zero to infinite, so this, this file could in, th in theory hold multiple rows, um, the XML file that is, but uh, as I said, my XML file it only contains the one row. Okay, let's go on to creating my map now. So I go into the map file section and choose new map source. I'm going to call this map source example.mms. It's going into my project and I click finish. I'm going to create within that source file a new map and call it example1 and I'm going to create a new input card to read my XML file. We'll call that in1. We will use the input.xsd file, the xsd root object and read the input.xml file. Click OK, save and in the composition view here, uh, sorry, let's switch to the outline view, you will see that the map has got a purple icon, so this map is ready to build and run. So all that ma this map does at the moment is read my input file, which I will do now, build, run, map completed successfully. So at least I know my input XML doesn't have any bugs, um, it's gonna read in. So now we can move on to creating the output. Okay, so I have my template and from that I can create a schema file which I can use on the output card, which is my next step. So from the file menu, if I choose import and bring up the PDF importer, click next. Then I pick the template file that I have created using the JotForm website, template.pdf, and next select what project I want the schema to end up in, select next, and then it's finished, so I click finish. I won't open the type tree now, but what I will show you is the files that were created by the import process. I had template.pdf, it has created template.xsd and template.names. 
Okay, my next step is to create my output card. But before I do that, I'm just going to get the command line into my clipboard ready. Okay, so I'm going to create a new output card. The card name is out. The type tree is the one that we just imported, template.xsd. The root object, as always with xsd, is xsd. And the um, target is not going to be file, it's going to be PDF, as in the PDF adapter. And the command I'm going to use in there, I'm going to paste in from my clipboard. So we have a dash u, a dash n, and a dash p. The n and the p refer to the um, or the n refers to the one of the files that was imported, template.names. The p refers to the template.pdf that I downloaded from the Jotforms website after creating it. And the dash u refers to the final file that I want to create. I've also put a, a TV on there for a verbose trace in case things go wrong. So let's click OK. OK, let's fill out some of the prolog items here in the schema uh, in the XML side. 1.0 UTF-8. OK, there are the only two rules I need in there at the moment. I'm going to place none in the top one and none in standalone. Let's expand global and we've got document here. I'm going to jump down to a functional map to um, map the document just for clarity. You don't have to. I mean, I could just go along and map it, the individual objects down here, but I'm going to jump to a functional map just for clarity. So equals F underscore create doc. And the object I'm going to pull in is this repeating group rows. Now, because I'm pulling it into a cell that is not repeating, it's only ever going to pull in the first row. And as I only have one row anyway, that's perfectly fine with me. OK, in the composition view now, hopefully, um, no, OK, I may have to save and close and reopen this file for the composition view to start working. OK, so we've got example one and underneath that the blank, empty, not yet created functional app call. So let's uh, right click and use the functional map wizard to create that functional map right now. Create, close. And now if I double click on that functional map, you can see that I've got lots of input objects that I can map over to output objects. For example, account number can just be dragged over to account number. But I'm quite lazy, so I'm not actually going to do that. I'm going to use one that I prepared earlier. Okay, that's one I prepared earlier, so I reopen the same file and by Blue Peter Magic in F underscore create doc we have all of our rules filled out. As I said before, the account number is the only one that can be dragged and dropped and that doesn't require any additional formatting. The date field, I've used a couple of functions in there. I've used the current date time with a format picture and then wrapped that entire thing in a text to, uh, to go into the text field here. For my address field, which is down here, address 2, I've brought in the customer name, address 1, 2, 3 and 4 and postcode, each one separated with a new line character. And for my balance fields, um, I've brought in, I've used an if function to check the field. If it's less than 0, I put a dr on the end and I remove, using a substitute function, the minus sign. And if it's, if it's not less than zero, if, if we come over here to the fail part of the if, I put in the balance followed by a CR to show it's a credit. And I've done that for each of the numeric fields um, shown here on the output. Uh, each one of the numbers that is coming in is actually a number, but on this output is a text field. So I've had to use the text function in each case. OK, so I think we're at the point where I can build and run my map now. I'll just show you the doc directory that we've got at the moment which is a bunch of files. There's only one PDF which is my template. If I switch back to my map and build and run this map, it maps completed successfully. Switch back to the Explorer view and you'll note that I've now got an output.pdf and if we open that you'll see that the account number, the name and address, uh, the dates and all the credit debits have been filled in as per the mapping requirement. So that is it. In summary, how to use IBM Transformation Extender 10 to map an XML file 
into a PDF. You can then obviously use the uh, other adapters in the product, like the email adapter or the FTP adapter, to route that PDF, or indeed multiple PDFs if this map had read multiple rows, um, onto other destinations. I hope you've found this uh, informative. Thank you. I want to thank you for joining me on this video presentation today. I hope you found it both interesting and informative. Please like and follow my channel to get more video content such as this. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at PaulBrettIBM. Thank you.